touched will way It's time to say it's great to celebrate a hundred years A hundred years It's time to celebrate the Hurstville Hundred It's great to celebrate yeah, uh, Centenary was uh, in March 1987 I was fortunate to be the town park of Bristol Municipal Council, as it was then, at that time, and I considered that to be a privilege to be involved. So I asked town clerk, and I was required to uh, make reports to the council and suggest ways in which celebrations could be organised. And as it turned out, we had a year-long party that was absolutely fantastic. The uh, actual date of the original proclamation of Hurstville as a municipality uh, it was the 25th of March 1987. So exactly 100 years later, on the 25th of March 1987, the council held a special council meeting to commemorate that proclamation. The very operative words of that motion, Madam Mayor, uh, acknowledge that the generous blessing of Almighty God with the wisdom and guidance he has bestowed upon us. Madam Mayor, I'd like to move that this meeting of the Herschel Municipal Council place on record the appreciation of the present day citizens of the municipality. The first election of the Alderman for Herschel Municipal Council was held at the Blue Post Inn, which was a popular meeting place. It was in Forest Road, opposite where first of all public school stands now. There were 18 candidates, nine of whom were elected. A special guest at, at the um, meeting was uh, Alderman Barry O'Keefe, QC, uh, President of the New South Wales Local Government Association. No logging and trees, animals and farms, but the staple diet of the place now known as Hurstville. A name which came to it because an inspector of schools decided in 1876 that the school established in the area should bear that name. Why that name is hard to tell. Hurst is said to be an English word meaning high ground, and Ville, of course, the village of. Whether that be right or not, one doesn't know, but it's a comfortable way of arriving at a name. During the meeting, um, Alderman Keith presented the council uh, with its grant of arms. And that was the first time that the, uh, the, the grant of arms and the coat of arms uh, was displayed publicly together with the uh, municipal flag. The sportsman's dinner was a remarkable event. Um, it was a capacity house. Um, and I have to confess that uh, whilst I always knew that St George and Hurstville had great sporting traditions, um, I was amazed on the night at the, at the depth of sporting achievement in this area. There was champion after champion, gold medalist after gold medalist that was brought forward, uh, presented with a medallion, um, and it stretched virtually back to the turn of the century. The greatest satisfaction from the, the whole year's effort, and it was a big effort and a lot of work for a lot of people, was that the community really did respond to what was done and they turned out literally in their thousands. This, the um, St George Great Train Festival, for example, uh, it's estimated that through that week there are 100,000 people who attended and uh, took part in it. Hurstville has got some connection with railways um, in that it was the first line to be electrified, the railway line to Hurstville. So it was from that very, very small beginning that the festival started to be put together. Um, there were enthusiasts involved in it. And the end result of all of those efforts was the um, festival, uh, or a festival, um, that attracted virtually international uh, attention. There was certainly national attention. And through the weekdays, there were steam train rides predominantly for the children of the area. Um, and as I recall, during the week, there were uh, something like 8,000 school children that took part in that and had the uh, 
excitement of travelling on a steam train probably for the first time in their life. Another part of the uh, train festival activities was the um, train lovers dinner and that, that was uh, an exciting night uh, comprising people at that dinner who were absolutely um, head over heels in love with trains and the night went on and on and on with speaker after speaker reminiscing about their experiences with trains and one of the uh, speakers on that night was the uh, was Jack Sparks who um, helped organise the train festival and of course Jack was the original driver of 3801. The main uh, aim that we wanted to uh, achieve was to involve the community and in retrospect we did that much better than we even imagined we would at the time. A lot of the credit for that goes first of all to the council but secondly to the uh, magnificent community committee that was formed. The major outcome of the whole year's activities uh, really was the depth of feeling within the community uh, for Hurstville. People are very, very much involved in this community and the celebrations that the council put on uh, became a focus for that involvement. It was obvious by the huge participation uh, in every event that was put on, uh, the interest that, that people had in what we were doing. Lady Maris, I was chosen from Jack Eric to be in charge of the entertainment for 1987. Mrs. Mrs. There were quite a number of sporting events that were conducted through the year. We even had a horse race named after us at Ranwick, which was another very enjoyable day, and that race was the Hurstville 100. The twin town um, idea came to us through Les Jarman, and it, it was based on the origins of uh, both Timber Town and Hurstville, of um, timber getting, um, and of course, Timber Town is located in Hastings Shire near Port Macquarie. The long-term benefit really is that it, it highlighted how far the area had travelled in the hundred years since its beginnings and had come a very long way um, and the celebrations pointed too to the uh, future of Hurstville and the very rosy future that it's got um, and that the people here are capable of carrying it through to uh, bigger and better things over the next hundred years.